Hey everyone, this is Alan Shim. I'm excited to bring you this Echo video. If you're an Echo newbie or use Echo pretty frequently, but you never seem to know how to troubleshoot your slightly off images, this is the video for you. I've made other videos before, and uh, trust me, this video is very different. You'll see. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this. But this is the first video to go over a step-by-step -step approach to acquiring and optimizing your four basic views. We'll be using a high fidelity bodywork simulator along with multiple close-up shots so that you can see how even slight movements can make your images infinitely better. So sit back and enjoy. Is that what I think it is? Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, first, most people think that the avical windows are the best. You can put color on them and it definitely looks pretty, but you know what? It's actually the parasol long axis that is key. Just like that mythical briefcase that ties Pulp Fiction together, the parasol long axis is not only beautiful, but it's fundamental to a great echo. Why is that? Well, first, this is the scan plane for the long axis. It is a perpendicular plane to the apical image on the left here and stretches from the base of the heart to the apex. On the images on the right, you can see the left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, left ventricular alpha tract, and aortic valve. And this is the direction of blood flow from the left heart to the systemic circulation. So you can get a sense of LV systolic function. Also, you have the entire pericardium around the heart seen as this hyperechoic border all around. So you can also assess for pericardial effusions that are seen as anechoic stripes between this border and just anterior to the descending aorta. But that's not all. Once you are able to visualize the long axis, the other echo windows are relative walks in the part. For example, the parasol short axis is obtained by rotating the probe 90 degrees clockwise and sliding along this long axis. And if you slide along the long axis to the apex right here, you can fan or tilt to get apical windows. So next is a step-by-step -step method to obtaining a great personal long axis. And you don't even have to sell your soul to the devil. How you hold the probe is crucial in echo. What might be good for flying a $100 million jet is simply horrible in echo. Why? You just have poor control. There are so many intricate structures like valves and chambers that are sometimes millimeters apart. And as you can see, you just don't have the precision to examine them when your grip is like this. You need surgical precision, and that means holding the probe like a scalpel, close to the transducer head and with your hand anchored to the skin surface. You want to be able to isolate your movements. Do one movement at a time. For example, when you rotate, you don't want to angle as well, or when you're fanning, you don't want to angle. You want to be able to appreciate how your movements translate into changes in the image. And you can only do that by isolating your movements. So what are the basic movements? This is fanning or tilting. This is a side-by-side -side movement along the broad face of the probe. Note that I'm not angling or rocking. Next is angling or rocking, which is the to and fro movement along the narrow face of the probe. Again, there's no fanning or tilting. This is rotation, which is the movement around the axis created by the handle of the probe. You have to be really careful not to angle or rotate. So what I do sometimes is to hold the probe to the skin with one hand and to rotate the probe with the other hand. Make sure that there's no angling or tilting. The last movement is actually sliding or translating the probe along the skin. Again, you want to isolate this movement without having to tilt, rock, or rotate the probe while you slide. It's very important to realize that the surface anatomy is just a rough guide to where the heart will be. Every heart has a different shape, rotation, and an axis depending on if the heart is dilated or patients have lung disease or even ascites. To start, you want to be able to understand and visualize the bony anatomy above the heart. Here, I'm palpating the sternum and the ribs and then using chalk to mark them. Obviously, you don't want to do this on your patients, 
but try to visualize the bony anatomy before you place the probe to chest. Now you have four intercostal spaces to work with. The first intercostal space shows air shadowing artifact, so the plane is still superior or above the heart. This next inferior intercostal space shows some cardiac motion, so you know that you're around the superior heart border. I'll mark this with a red line. The next intercostal space inferior to that reveals more cardiac motion, so that's good. And then this last intercostal space shows more air shadowing uh, from the lung, so that is an inferior heart border. Again, don't draw on the patient's chest, but take a mental note of where the heart is and which intercostal spaces that you can use. This simulator doesn't show artifacts realistically, so this is bone shadowing from rib seen as anechoic bands on either side of the heart. Next, you'll see these horizontal lines which indicate that the probe is over lung. These are called A-lines and are a type of reverberation artifact. So learn to recognize these common artifacts of the thorax on ultrasound. As you move more inferiorly, you encounter some cardiac motion. Realize that the more superior position, the more inferior you need to fan your scan plane. And the more inferior position, the more you have to fan or tilt superiorly to image the heart. Most people have at least two intercostal spaces to work with, so find one intercostal space that is free of both lung and bone artifact. So we have a good intercostal space free of bone or lung artifact. Now imagine that the left ventricle is like a pineapple and that the peristal long axis cuts through it from top to bottom. You want to tilt the probe so that the cut is in the center of the pineapple or the left ventricle. This scan plane is too superior and cuts through the lateral papillary muscle and lateral LV wall. To go back into the center of the LV, you need to tilt inferiorly, and this is what you see. Now this is the center of the LV. You can see that there are no papillary muscles, and you can see the mitral valve and aortic valve. Now as you continue to tilt inferiorly, you'll start to see the interventricular septum as well as that medial papillary muscle. The right heart is inferior and anterior in relation to the left heart. As you continue to tilt more inferiorly, you will see the right ventricle and atrium. This is called the RV inflow view. When you see this, recognize that your scan plane is too inferior and that you need to fan superiorly to find the parasol long axis again. You know, a lot of POCUS is recognizing which cross-section of the structure that the scan plane represents. POCUS helps you to learn the anatomy, but you also need to know the anatomy well to understand what you're seeing on ultrasound. It's a lot of trial and error, but once you get the hang of it, it gets easier and easier. Don't be afraid to make dedicated movements and try to understand the changes that you see on the screen. This is the case with rotating the probe to find the LV long axis. If you are under-rotated, your scan plane will image the lateral wall and the LV looks shortened. Also, you won't see the aortic valve, which is now out of plane. So then continue to rotate clockwise. You'll see the LV start to stretch out and both mitral and aortic valves will now be in view. If you continue to rotate clockwise, you'll be over-rotating. The LV starts to round out again and the muscle appears thickened because now you're imaging the apex and the interventricular septum. Recognize this and recognize that you need to rotate counterclockwise now to find the long axis. At this point, you may need to make some minor adjustments like fanning to be back in the center of the LV. I'm in the LV long axis now because one, I can see both mitral and aortic valves, and two, the LV looks like it's maximally stretched. Sometimes the LV can appear to point to the top left of the screen. This is because the probe is usually a little bit more lateral along the long axis than it should be. To fix this, angle the probe towards the apex. The LV should now appear more horizontal. Then you can slide medially to visualize more of the base of the heart.
So now it's time to put all of these optimizing techniques together and you can adjust the order according to need. First, we just angle towards the apex and slid medially to get a more horizontal LV. Second, we'll rotate to find the long axis. Next, we'll fan or tilt to find the LV center. Finally, visualize the long axis. Don't draw on the patient's chest like I'm doing here, but learn to visualize it in your mind because this is really important for the next windows. Once you know the long axis, you can just rotate the probe clockwise 90 degrees, and no matter where the screen dot is or your convention, you'll arrive at a parasol short axis. And if the LV appears off center, just angle in the same direction to center it. In the short axis now, you can actually slide along that imaginary line to image from base to apex. Okay, we've covered a lot so far. For those just starting out, I recommend that you go out and practice these maneuvers first until you have them down. Because the parasol long and short axis windows will allow you to answer important clinical questions 90% of the time, such as the patient's systolic function, presence of pericardial fusion, as well as the presence of right ventricular dysfunction or strain. Once you're ready for more, watch the rest of the video. Okay, we've covered the parasol level at the mid apex where you see the papillary muscles. Now slide the probe slowly towards the base, again using the long axis as a guide. Here you'll be at the level of the mitral valve where you'll see the anterior and posterior mitral valve leaflets. As I slide towards the base, I'm using the red line of the long axis as a guide, and I'm tilting slightly just to make sure I'm in a perpendicular plane to the heart. Now as you continue sliding towards the base, you will start to image the aortic valve, which is shown with its three cusps in the center. This is the highest peristonal plane, and at this level you are imaging the start of the aorta and pulmonary artery along with the atria. From bottom going clockwise is the left atrium, right atrium, tricuspid valve at about 9 o'clock, the right ventricular outflow tract on top, then the pulmonic valve around 3 o'clock, and then the main pulmonary artery on the right. This is a very busy scan plane, but definitely very valuable, especially when doing more advanced assessments of the right heart. The apical windows can be pretty spectacular and yield really advanced information. However, they can be challenging to obtain, and they are not really necessary to answer core focus questions of systolic function, RV strain, or presence of pericardial effusion. If you do attempt apical windows, patience is key, along with learning to perform very fine movements. Just tilting by one degree or sliding by one millimeter can radically improve your apical windows. And you have to compare the image at hand with your mental image of the anatomy and adjust your movements until you arrive at that window. With that said, there are two ways to get to approximate apical windows. The first is via the parasol short axis. In this axis, slide all the way to the apex. This is seen as just contracting muscle near the top of the screen. At this point, fan or tilt anteriorly and towards the right shoulder. You've essentially gone from an anterior posterior plane to a coronal plane of the heart. Here we're seeing the left ventricle and left atrium in an apical two-chamber view. By rotating the probe clockwise, we get an apical four-chamber. This is because the right heart is more anterior than the left heart, and rotation clockwise generates a more anterior plane. This is a good time to talk about the apical windows. First, once you have one good apical window, don't slide the probe. Keep it in that position on the chest because the other apical windows are obtained via rotation. To go from apical two to four chamber, you just need to rotate the probe about 90 degrees clockwise. So we just went over the first method to obtaining an apical window, which was from the parasol short axis. Now let's look at obtaining the apical window from a parasol long axis. This is accomplished by sliding the probe along the long axis to the apex and then slightly angling until the left ventricle points to the top of the screen. Now we're at an apical three chamber window with the left atrium, left ventricle, and the left ventricular alpha tract as the three chambers. We can see that the apical three chamber is really just the parasol long axis, but imaged from the apex. 
Now the left of the screen points inferiorly while the right points anteriorly. To go from the apical 3 to 4 chamber, you need to rotate essentially 120 degrees or so, passing the apical 2 chamber to arrive at the 4 chamber. Here's a pearl to center the heart on apical windows. If you are imaging mostly the left heart, you are too lateral. You need to slide maybe a few millimeters to your left or immediately on the patient's chest to center the heart. Now if you're imaging mostly the right heart, you are too medial and you need to slide a few millimeters to your right or laterally on the patient's chest to center the heart. Now let's put this pearl into action. Note that you're imaging the left side only. You're too lateral, so slide a bit medially or to your left. Now rotate and angle slightly to arrive at a centered apical four chamber. Now let's talk about the apical five chamber. This is obtained by starting at the four chamber and slightly tilting the probe anteriorly to obtain those four chambers plus the left ventricular alpha tract, which is the fifth chamber. Here it is on the simulator. Note that you just need to tilt about one or two degrees to get that five chamber. Well, that's it to obtaining your apical windows. Now let's return back to the parasol short axis. You want to tilt towards the apex and then from the parasol short, slide from the apex to the base using that red line for the long axis. Then we'll rotate back to the parasol long axis window and we're at the beginning. We've covered a lot in this video and I know it's difficult to visualize the anatomy, but like any skill, it takes dedicated practice. So go out there, scan, make mistakes, and learn from your mistakes. Thanks to those who made this video possible. Here's some information if you want to learn more or reach me.